Hello, my name is Mel Balsamo, and today I will be performing a demo of Cadaver's Excel to InfoPath tool. The tool is used to convert raw data from an Excel spreadsheet into InfoPath forms in XML format. After installing the Excel to InfoPath tool, navigate to the directory where you placed your installation. I used the default installation, so I'd go to Start, Computer, C Drive, Program Files, Cadabra Software, Cadabra Excel to XML tool. All the files used in the conversion process are located in this folder. Let me give you a brief overview of the tool's contents. Sample.exalis. This is my sample Excel spreadsheet. Here I have a couple of rows and columns with different values, and I want to convert each of these rows into an XML file. Sample solution. This is the folder where I saved my InfoPath form source files. I have designed an InfoPath form where my Excel data will be mapped and saved. Now this is the configuration file for the tool. You can open this in any text editor such as Notepad. App Settings. This is the application settings where we declare the Excel file name, sheet name, the location of template.xml, and the local directory where the XML files will be created. In this case, I want to create the files to a folder named Output. Now this right here is a namespace with a prefix my, and it can be obtained from myschema.xsd file. Mapping info. Here's where I mapped my Excel data and specified the types of each. I have a document ID, name, integer value, double value, date value, today, and the mixed value. We want to make sure that all the values here are declared correctly so the conversion succeeds. Double click on the exe list to xml.exe file to run the tool. So now I have the output folder which the tool created. It contains nine XML files since I have nine rows in my Excel sheet. Now I'll show you how the tool works with the Cadabra Database Accelerator, or what's known as DBXL. I have created a doc type in my DBXL administration tool. I named it Sample Solution and attached my InfoPath form. Now I have to declare the doc type in the config file. So here in the config file, we need to set local output only to false instead of true, since we want the tool to create the XML files not just locally but to DBXL as well. Make sure to specify your DBXL web service URL here, and then your doc type name here. In this case, we named our doc type sample solution. So when that's done, go ahead and save your config file. Before I rerun the tool, I will delete the output folder that was created earlier. And in my DAT, you will see that there are currently no documents. Run the tool once again by double-clicking the .exe file. It should take a little longer since now we configured the tool to create XML files in DBXL instead of local output only. Now that it's done, let's check the results. I have the output folder created locally and there are nine XML files. I'll refresh my DAT. And now we see those nine documents created there as well. If I open one of the files, you'll see that the values are shredded to their designated fields. Let's try to add another column to our Excel sheet and specify some values. Open the sample.exilis file. Add another column, say comments, 
and enter values for the first three rows. And then save your Excel sheet. We need to modify our info path form to add a field for the new column we created here. So open the sample solution folder, right click on manifest.xsf, and click design. Add another row in the table, and label it as comments. In the Design Tasks pane, click on Controls, and then select Text Box. Double-click on the new field, name it Comments, and click OK. Once again, save it as source files by overriding what we previously had. We need to overwrite the sample solution.exisen file we had as well. So go to File, Save As, browse to the exisen file, click Save, then Overwrite. We then need to attach this new info path form to the doc type we have in DAT. Go to DAT, General tab. Right-click on the Exazen file, click Attach, select your sample solution.exazen, click Save, and then OK. Now we need to map that new field onto our configuration file. Open the configuration file and add a new key for the comments field. Since we left some of our rows in our Excel sheet as blank, we need to specify this key as nillable equals true. As for the type, we don't have to specify any, since the tool recognizes a string as a default data type, and that's what we used for the comments field. Save your configuration file. Finally, before we run the tool once again, Delete all the documents that were previously created. Go to Documents tab in DAT and click Delete All. Just say yes to that and click OK. Then delete the output folder as well. We're all set to run the tool again. Double-click on the exe file and we wait for that. And that's done. There's our output folder with the nine XML files. And if we refresh our DAT, you'll see our nine documents. Let's open the first document. Here we can see the comments field that we added. So that's how the Excel to InfoPath tool works. To download the tool, go to our website www.cadabra.com, go to Products, and click on Cadabra Excel to InfoPath Migration Tool. Thank you for watching Cadabra's Excel to InfoPath Tool Demo.